Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Hold on a second, Tim. We're not done yet. Apple may have just wrapped up their big iPhone 16 event, but we've still got several big Apple products set to make their big release before the end of 2024. And hopefully these are exciting updates and not just slapping a new color on there and calling it a day. Looking at you, Apple Watch Ultra. Hopefully we're getting some very big Apple product updates very soon. In fact, let me break down in this video the top five or so new products from Apple we should be getting in the not too distant future because there's already talk of another Apple event happening in just a couple of weeks. No, I'm not kidding. Okay, so you can let me know your thoughts on this glow time event down below, but hopefully I'm not the only one who felt like, I wish there was just a little bit more here. Now, despite what some commenters may say, I'm not trying to be an Apple hater. I think the iPhone 16 is bringing some cool features. Apple Watch Series 10, nice to see Jet Black make its return. But there were some points that I was just sort of waiting and hoping for a surprise announcement that Apple sort of tried to lead us that we were gonna get but ultimately didn't happen. For example, when Apple sort of talked about AirPods updates and updates to every AirPods in the lineup, I was super excited that maybe those last minute rumors of an AirPods Pro announcement would be true. And um, that's not exactly what we got. Hearing aid features are really cool, but I was hoping for something else like actual new AirPods Pro, I think like many of you guys who also watched the event. Now, the good news here though, is that we know that Apple is working on a new version of AirPods Pro, and especially with all the updates that Apple brought to regular AirPods 4, it's a little confusing, I'm talking about the ones with active noise cancellation, uh, Apple really needs to do more to sort of separate the AirPods Pro and really make them worthy of the Pro name and Pro price tag, which according to rumors, we could see in two or three big ways. The first is that because AirPods Pro have the advantage of actually going more in your ears, there is talk that AirPods Pro 3 could give you significantly, noticeably, other adjectives included in there, better active noise cancellation that would really be a step above of AirPods 4. We've also heard that Apple could be working on bringing some other health features and sensors to AirPods Pro as well, that basically you could get some of the fitness capabilities and tracking of the Apple Watch in your ears, so you wouldn't have to wear an Apple Watch in your wrist, but you could track all the workouts and everything you're doing just by having AirPods Pro in your ears. That'd be cool. And then there's also, of course, been rumors for a while now that maybe Apple could redo the case with AirPods Pro 3, maybe giving us a screen on the AirPods case itself. This one's maybe a little bit more of a dream than it is actually going to happen, uh, but something sort of different, whether it be new colors or new design or something, would be really cool to see on the higher end, more expensive AirPods. But with all that said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Good news is that this actually is supposed to be a meaningful update, unlike AirPods Max that after four years just got new colors and USB-C, but it likely won't be happening this year. Likely sometime in 2025, we'll be getting an AirPods Pro announcement. So it's in the works, but not ready just yet. Maybe in the spring, but I don't know. Moving on from that, of course, we also got the Apple Watch Series 10. We got the Apple Watch Ultra in a new color, which I'm still sticking with my Gen 1. I just don't see a reason to upgrade. And I was a little bit surprised that the Apple Watch SE, highly rumored to be getting a new plastic body and some new sort of colorful sort of options, sort of matching the iPhone 16, did not happen. Still seems like this is in the works and makes a lot of sense as that uh, is a very popular watch model. And given the really nice vibrant colors of iPhone 16, I think bringing that to the Apple Watch would make a lot of sense since it's not on Series 10, nor is it on the Ultra line, um, but it just didn't make an appearance. So I'm wondering if maybe we see this at a spring event, Apple likes to do sort of new colors and mid-cycle refreshes uh, later on sort of in the new year. So maybe that could make sense along with what could be one of Apple's biggest iPhone announcements ever also happening in the spring. And no, I'm not talking about some early iPhone 17 release or an iPhone Ultra. I'm talking about the all new iPhone SE 4 because this would give you like 90% of like the higher end iPhone features for a way lesser price. We're talking, according to rumors, a 6.1 inch OLED display, an action button, a 48 megapixel camera. We'd be getting Apple intelligence support, USB-C. Really the only thing you'd be missing from SE4 
would be presumably dynamic island. You'd be missing the second lens. You'd be missing camera control. Notice Apple doesn't say camera control button. They call it camera control and probably some other under the hood spec upgrades and stuff that just aren't on this phone. But even if it was sort of missing that, for like around 400 bucks, that could be a really, really good priced phone and provide a lot of value. Of course, the big question though, is what the final price of this will be and especially what the carrier deals will be because if you're able to get this for an inexpensive amount or jump on a carrier promo, this could be a really great option, giving you a better screen, bigger screen, new design, all that stuff. This should be super exciting. And again, um, as exciting as it is, probably not coming until the spring of 2025, according to the latest leaks and rumors. And then of course, the other emissions from the September event, which could be seen way sooner than later, would be two categories, specifically new M4 Max and also iPad. We are expecting a few more iPad updates before the end of the year, namely a base iPad update with a spec bump and probably a little bit of a better camera, as well as an update to the iPad mini. And then a couple of M4 Max are in the works as well. We're thinking maybe a new iMac with an M4, just sort of a slight tweak there. M4 MacBook Pros, and then also probably one of the more exciting things is a talk of a new smaller Mac Mini that'd be packed with M4 and be getting a pretty big design change, actually making its footprint way, way smaller, closer to actually the size of the Apple TV, which would be significantly smaller than the Mac Mini we've got right now, really making the Mac Mini live up to its mini name. And given the fact that there's probably enough here that constitutes an event and also that Apple sort of had this exact same playbook last year with the September event and then the scary fast event in late October, something like that again definitely makes sense. October or November is sort of the rumor as of right now as to when we could see an event. Again, likely focusing as of now on just Macs and iPads, but maybe something else could be seen. Maybe an AirPods Pro surprise or something. Not sure as of yet. Of course, there's other stuff in the works, iPhone 7, the Apple robot, there's talk of folding Macs and all that stuff, but that's all 2025. As of now, this September event, so iPhone 16, new Apple watches, all that, that was kind of the big announcement for the year. And uh, while we could see one more event, that's kind of gonna be it as Apple sort of wraps up the year as they're really gonna push, you know, Apple intelligence and all the software stuff with iOS 18 and a lot less uh, focus will be on new hardware. As always though, I wanna know your thoughts down below on all this stuff. Your thoughts on the Glow Time event. Was there something you thought we would see that we didn't? Will you be upgrading the 16? Are you going to be waiting a whole year for the iPhone 17 now? Let me know your thoughts down below. As always, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for support. Thank you for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle, and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm doing my Tim Cook Apple presenter hand thing here. Good morning and good night. All right. Bad, uh, that, that was bad. If you stayed to the very end, <laughs> you saw me humiliate myself on camera and I will keep it in. Thank you for watching. That, I didn't even get an accent that time. Thank you. I'm just gonna stop. Thanks.